वेलकम टू लेक्चर्स ऑन डिजिटल कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड टुडे टॉपिक इज स्टेट स्पेस रिप्रेजेंटेशंस फॉर डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिस्टम्स वेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन द अर्लियर क्लासेस वी हैव डिस्कस फोर डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशंस ऑफ स्टेट स्पेस रिप्रेजेंटेशंस ऑफ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिस्टम्स व्हिच आर कंट्रोलेबल कैनोनिकल फॉर्म the observable canonical form the third diagonal canonical form and fourth the jordan canonical form right so we will be discussing that we have already discussed that the state space representations are never unique or not unique in nature right so we have different types of representations of uh, state space uh, uh, state variables in the discrete time systems therefore we will be trying to find out what are the various uh, methods that we have and in today's in this lecture we will be discussing controllable canonical form and in this controllable canonical form For example, let us say we have our pulse transfer function y of z by u of z, where y of z is the output, u of z is the input, which is given as b not z power n plus b one z power n minus one, b two z power n minus two plus so on plus b n by z power n plus y one z power n minus one y two z power n minus two plus so on y n. Now when we are having this pulse transfer function, this pulse transfer function we have to convert this into state space uh, form, right? And that state space form is our controllable canonical form. Now that controllable canonical form can be obtained by first dividing divide. numerator and denominator with z power n when we are dividing numerator and denominator with z power n we have y of z by u of z as b not plus b1 z power minus 1 plus b2 z power minus 2 plus bn z power minus n by 1 plus a1 z power minus 1 plus a2 z power minus 2 plus an z power minus 1 this is the equation which we will be getting and divide once if we divide the numerator divide the numerator with denominator once that is u of z in the normal division process we if we have this we will be having y of z by u of z as b not plus b1 minus a1 b not z power minus 1 b2 minus a2 b not z power minus 2 plus so on plus b b n minus a n b not z power minus n by one plus a one z inverse plus a two z power minus two plus a n z power minus n. Now when you are dividing this and cross multiplying u of z to the other form, then you can have this y of z is equal to b not u of z plus so on into u of z so this equation if we can represent it like this it is b not u of z plus this entire term you can call this as y cap of y cap of z let us say 
this the the factor inside the braces you can call it as y k bar z and if we are having this if you can replace this with or y k bar z you by u of z from this braces you can say y k bar z is equal to this one so y k bar z by u of z you can have this as b1 minus a1 b0 z power minus 1 plus b2 minus a2 b0 z power minus 2 plus so on bn minus an b0 z power minus n by 1 plus a1 z inverse a2 z power minus 2 plus an z power minus n now this equation is important for us we will be using it in the later part of our derivation then y cap of z by u of z if you can represent here in this form y cap of z you can cross multiply this write it down and this can be take, taken up you can say that you are having when you are bringing the numerator of the second right hand side to the bottom of y cap of z and u of z is brought up you can say that we are having y cap of z by b1 minus a1 b0 b1 minus a1 b0 z inverse plus b2 minus a2 b0 z power minus 2 plus bn minus an b0 z power minus n I, i have brought the numerator of the right hand side to the denominator of y cap of z and if we equate it here y u of z is brought here u of z by 1 plus a1 z inverse a2 z power minus 2 plus an z power minus n now we have two equations here one is left hand side and the right hand side this entire thing if we treat it as q of z because it is a polynomial in z therefore if i can treat that as u of q of z now just equating each at a time that is y cap of z by the denominator is equal to q of z therefore you can write that y cap of z is equal to b1 minus a1 b0 z inverse qz if you cross cross multiply plus b2 minus a2 b0 z power minus 2 qz plus so on plus bn minus an b0 z power minus n into qz now let me consider this as my second equation now let us equate these two when you equate these two you can have that u of z is equal to q of z plus a1 z inverse qz plus a2 z power minus 2 qz plus so on an z power minus n qz now let me consider this as the third equation now it is necessary for us to work out or define let us define the state variables when we are defining the state variables in z domain let us say x1 of z x2 of z and let me put this equation separately so that i can have this for few for the reference b not uz plus y cap of z this is our first equation one now where we have n number of uh, state variables therefore x n minus 1 z and x n of z these are our state variables and we will have to define the state variables when we are defining the state variables we should define in such a way that let us say we are having 
z power minus n q of z that is let me consider that as x1 of z that is z power minus n q of z let me consider this as x1 of z then obviously minus n plus 1 q of z x2 of z similarly this can be written z power minus 2 q of z and this is z power minus 1 q of z now we have defined these state variables in this way that is we have already discussed that the state variables can be defined in any form that that are convenient to us so we have defined the state variables in such a manner x1 z is equal to z power minus n q of z and therefore this is called the direct programming method the direct programming method the controllable canonical form the controllable canonical form is obtained by the direct programming method right so we have defined these state variables in this form now when you are considering this one when you are considering this what can what uh, we can write is z x n z z x n of z is equal to q z right so or we can also consider or substitute these values in this in these equations or for equation 3 gives us equation 3 that is u of z is equal to u of z is equal to q of z q of z again it is q of z again it is z into x and z z x and z when you bring z z in means q of z from this equation you can get, say that z into x n of z now when you are substituting this here plus a1 z inverse qz z inverse qz is x n z x n z plus a2 plus a2 z power minus 2 qz is x n minus 1 z x n minus 1 z plus so on plus a n x 1 z a n x 1 z now when we try to rewrite rewrite this equation you can have z x and z on the left hand side z x and z if it is taken to the left hand side right and you can take consider all the other parameters to the or to the other side so you will have minus a n x 1 z minus a n minus 1 x 2 z so on minus minus so on minus a2 x n minus 1 z minus a1 x n z plus u of z plus u of z now let us consider this as equation 4 so we have this when you are substituting all these state variables in this equation you are having u of z is equal to qz qz is z into x and z qz is z into x and z plus a1 z inverse qz is x and z and so on once you substitute and rewrite you can have this equation 4 once this equation 4 is obtained and we are bound to substitute this define the state variables in equation 2 therefore y cap of z is equal to b1 minus a1 b0 z inverse x, x q of z is x and z plus b2 minus a2 b0 z power minus 2 q of z is x n minus 1 z plus so on plus bn minus 
a and b not z inverse q z z inverse q z is x one z x one z that is the equation which we have obtained and this is equation five. So conveniently I can just erase these two terms because we are done with these equations two and three. Now you can say we have equations four and equations four, five and one. We are considering equations four, five and one. So this equation 5, equation 4 and equation 1. Once we consider these equations, we can just simply applying, applying inverse Z transforms to equations 4, 5 and 1 will be having when you are operating on this one z into x and z is nothing but x n plus 1 k sorry x n x n k plus 1 x n k plus 1 because z power positive 1 it is time advanced uh, uh, transfer function, time advance function therefore z power 1 xn of z will give us xn k, k plus 1 which is nothing but minus a1 inverse Laplace inverse z transform of x1 of z is x1 k minus minus this is a n a n x1 k minus a n minus 1 x2 k minus so on minus a2 x n minus 1 k a2 x n minus 1 k minus a1 x n k plus u of k this is equation 6 which we have obtained equation 4 is obtained as equation 6 so with this And now if you operate on this one, y cap of z, that is y cap of k is equal to b1 minus a1 b0 x and k when you are applying inverse z transforms plus b2 minus a2 b0 x n minus 1 k plus so on plus bn minus a n b0 x1 k. Let me consider this as equation 7. Now when you are applying inverse z transforms to this, you have yk, y of z is equal to yk, which is nothing but b0 u of k plus yk of k. Therefore, what is y of k? <coughs> y of k can be written as y cap of k plus b0 k. So you can write, you can write here as b n minus a n b naught. When you are re reversing this, because I need x one of k at the start plus b two minus a two b naught x two of k plus so on plus sorry this b n minus one minus a n minus one b naught x two k plus so on b2 minus a2 b0 x n minus 1 k plus b1 minus a1 b0 x n k this is y of k plus b0 u k plus b0 u k that is y of k is equal to y cap of k plus b0 u of k now let this let me call this as equation 8 so we have these equations and these equations, equation 6 and equation 8 
equation 6 and equation 8 gives us the state equations. You have these two equations xn k plus 1 is equal to minus an x1 k minus an minus 1 x2 k and so on and we have also de defined our state variables the state variables we have defined as that we have defined are x1 of z is equal to z power minus n q of z x2 of z is equal to z power minus n plus 1 q of z and so on xn z is equal to z power minus 1 q of z now from this equations you can say that when you are substituting these two x1 of z by x2 of z what is it that we are, going to, we are getting you are getting 1 by z or z x1 z is equal to x2 z or if you are applying inversely transforms to this you can say that it is x1 k plus 1 is equal to x2 k similarly for if you are sub doing it for all the subsequent things you will have 1 by z right so you can if you are after cross multiplying you can say that x2 k plus 1 is equal to x3 k similarly you will be getting until x n minus 1 by x n z right so x n minus 1 z by x n z is also 1 by z or you can say that x n minus 1 k plus 1 is equal to x n k so these are the equations that we are having and with this with these equations that is you can say we are having x1 k plus 1 is equal to x2 k x2 k plus 1 is equal to x3 k so on x n minus 1 k plus 1 is equal to x n k right and we have this equation so this combined you can call it as the state equations and this as the output equation now combined you can call this as the state model equations and these are called the controllable canonical form and the form can be considered in this way you can say x1 k plus 1 is x2 k if you can write all these equations all these equations in matrix notation matrix form or matrix notation you can have these equations in this form that is x1 k plus 1 is nothing but 0 x1 k plus 1 x2 k and the remaining 0 x3 k 0 x4 k and 0 x n k and there is no input that is contributing to x1 of k plus 1 and similarly to all the other equations therefore you can write these equations in this form you can write all these equations in this form in a matrix form you can write it as 0 1 so on 0 0 and 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 and here you have this as minus a n minus a n minus 1 a n minus 2 minus a 2 minus a 1 into x 1 k x2 k x n minus 1 k x n k plus every initial state variables they are having zeros with, with respect to the input and only the last equation you are having it with u of k so this is the state equation of the controllable canonical form and y of k 
y of k can be given as b n minus a n b naught then b n minus 1 minus a n minus 1 b naught we can have it here so on and b2 minus a2 b naught xn minus k b1 minus a n b naught a1 b naught x1 k and plus b naught a of k so this equation can be written in this form x1 k x2 k so on xn k plus b naught u of k so this is the controllable canonical form obtained from the direct programming method and as you can see from the initial equation that we have started y of z by u of z is nothing but b naught z power n plus b1 z power n minus 1 b2 z power n minus 2 plus so on b n minus 1 plus so on b n by 1 plus or z power n plus a 1 z power n minus 1 a 2 z power n minus 2 plus so on plus a n now from this equation we have obtained these two equations right after applying direct programming method from this directly from this equation you can immediately try and write down this equation by stating that see this form x1 of k by you have n different equations and n is the order of the system and that is obtained from the denominator highest power of z and minus a1 minus a2 minus a n are all indicated here in the bottom row of the system matrix in the reverse order that is minus a1 is here minus a2 that is the highest power coefficient is here and from there on it is going to the it is going in the to the towards the left hand side and this part is the identity matrix only the first column you have zeros and the remaining you have the identity matrix and only the bottommost part you have unity because the unit the input is contributing only to x n k plus 1 in this method direct programming method and the output y of k the output y of k when you are con uh, contributing it is b n minus a n into b naught b n minus 1 minus a n minus 1 into b naught similarly b 2 minus a 2 b naught and b 1 minus a 1 b naught so that is the thing you have obtained and this is the single row column and x the shape vector plus b naught u of k so from this equation directly if you know if you are asked with controllable canonical form and if you are not asked with the derivation part then you can directly write down the controllable canonical form without any problems